underperforming its potential. And many of you out there have worked in your lifetime at a restaurant, uh, whether you were in high school or college, uh, part-time work, you do it full-time now, you know someone that's working. Many of you have, have had a relationship, uh, you know, employee boss relationship with an owner of these kinds of businesses, these restaurants, these fast food locations. You may have heard this in the past. I, I may have mentioned it, but here's the key. There are businesses out there <coughs> that 90 to 95% of the business they do only pays the bills. 90 to 95% of all the sales coming in through the front door, all that business, that money just turns around and goes right back out the door in employees' pockets for pay, insurance costs, health, uh, health uh, board expenses, city taxes, rent, cost of food, the cost of natural gas to heat the burners in the back, uh, on and on it goes. The cost of being in business. The last 5 to 10% of what's coming in is actually a profit to the business itself. And there are restaurant owners out there and there are retailers out there who will say, uh, you'll ask them, do you know what your magic number is? every day and they go yeah i know my magic number i have to sell it might be a restaurant owner says i have to sell 250 meals a day to break even after i sell 250 meals the 251st and after is my profit and typically i reach that number just at the middle of lunch hour i get the rest of the lunch hour and the afternoon and the evening if i'm open that long to make profits for the for the business. The problem is I do most of my business between eight in the morning at breakfast, right up to about one. That's when I make you know 80% of my business. The other 20% comes out here or the last 10% or whatever it is. There are retailers who sell knickknack, patty wax, whatever they're selling, and these guys know we got to hit, that till has to hit $1,100 or $850 or whatever that magic, there's a magic number. It must hit that much. After that, I can tell you that of every dollar that comes in the door after that, 38 cents is profit. 38 cents. So if we bring in 100 bucks, I, we made $38. We bring in 1,000, we've made 380 above the minimum number. And when you're priced to perfection, that's what I call priced to perfection. When you're at 90% and over to make a profit, you are on thin ice, and any little glitch screws it up. A two-hour power outage screws up the day. A, uh, a, a strike down the road uh, against another employer with people walking the picket line, people avoid your part of town that aren't part of that thing, and your business just bleh. Your shopping mall... Um, has issues, your uh, major department store goes under. Uh, there's a million reasons why you can't make the magic number out of your control that's not in your control whatsoever. And this is where I think we, in, 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 in North America and Europe, we are headed for a, uh, uh, a recession because we're not matching our magic, or not going to reach our magic numbers. We are going to have issues with employees not enough to get to make the business work we're going to have uh, uh, so part supply problems uh where we aren't getting the merchandise in to get it out um and uh, guys like solar solar installers uh, companies that want to cut costs down dramatically can't cut costs down dramatically on electricity because they can't get the solar panels installed for one year two years they're on a waiting list. This is where we will underperform economically, where we, you know, we have the the, the talent that's there, the want, the desire. It's all, we just can't put it together. And uh, this market, uh, even right where it is, it's priced to perfection, and there is no perfection anywhere.
at this point in time. Zero perfection. Yeah, we got good news about oil and gas prices lower. Our gallon of gas has been dropping and dropping finally, but we're still paying way more than two years ago. We're not paying 8.5% more for gasoline. Like the inflation rate says we are paying more for goods and services. We're paying way, way more. Even though it's dropped from, what, six, a bur six bucks a gallon to four, we're still getting hosed. And uh, right at the moment, oil is down four, 524 a barrel. Right now it's at 86.90. Here we are. And we have another 10, 15 cents a gallon coming off the top, maybe 20 cents. But we're not down where we should be. And I mentioned this on the pre-market show. Um, over in Saudi Arabia, uh, Aramco, the Saudi national oil company, which I think is traded now, public traded, announced a $49 billion profit. Net, net profit of $49 billion. That's your money. Uh, every one of you watching me right now, and including me, we have all contributed to that profit. Even though we may not buy oil directly from the Saudi Aramco company, because the Aramco company sells a commodity known as oil, and it's set as a as a world has a world price to it. We don't negotiate oil prices with individual countries at a specific price. We pay the OPEC price, which is 87.04 right now. Because Aramco doesn't have to negotiate for its prices, they get like everyone else, the best price they can get. They have a cartel. Um, we are paying into cartel pricing, whether we're paying Exxon for the gas or Chevron or in Canada, we're paying Petro-Canada or Shell, whoever we use, wherever you are in the world, Aramco is enjoying the benefits of the world price of the commodity. And we, because we use too much of it, allow these guys to score almost 50 billion dollars net profit in 90 days that's a half a billion a day easy half a billion a day net profit to that entity add the money that the russians are making add the money to all the other opec members and you can see how the west we consumers are subsidizing the cartel kids with uh, the ability to build 100-story tall buildings and theme parks and allowing uh, uh, allowing the uh, segment of the world's population to enjoy first-class, business-class travel worldwide. And when I tell you that I'm in London and I'm at the Harrods department store with Jennifer, and we're hanging out for about four hours, we end up in the in a, a, a coffee uh, a cafe. We end up in a cafe inside Harrods. Uh, and I look around the room and I see uh, families from around the world, uh, from everywhere, including the Middle East. Um, my brain is going, I, I know how they're here. I, I, know what it's, I know what's doing it. I know exactly what's doing it. The cost of petrol, the cost of jet fuel, the cost of gasoline globally. And these folks are enjoying a lovely time in Harrods uh, where uh, a typical lunch at the coffee shop is uh, $40 a person and they have no problem paying it whatsoever. And uh, off you go. They've got bags and bags and bags of Herod goodie, Herod's goodies that they'll be taking home with them when they leave. And we're, we're the ones uh, giving them that lifestyle. It's us because we insist on our lifestyle, which unfortunately means we insist on using way more energy on a per person basis than most countries on this planet. And we justify it in our own way. It's okay. I'm not mad. <laughs> it just is the way it is. And so our friends at Aramco are having a great old time. And if you don't like the fact that the leader of that country um, has a way of dealing with journalists that, you know, might seem unpleasant to the rest of us. Uh, try and stop this guy. He's got $49 billion of protection to, uh, to uh, make sure no one touches him and his family. So there you go. And we're, we're supplying that lifestyle. And um, 
uh, we get to tolerate a photo in a newspaper of a fist pump between the president of the United States and this guy over here. Hey, it is what it is. The market right now, uh, with 18 minutes to go, we're down 212 points on the Dow. We're down 29 on S&P. We're down 66 on NASDAQ. We're down about a half a point on NASDAQ, two-thirds of a point on the other two indexes. Oil down, it was just down about five bucks a barrel. It's 464 lower at the moment, under 88 a barrel uh, in West Texas. A week ago, we were pushing 94 a barrel. So we have We've had a couple of days of hits here. There's more coming. Um, there's so much oil sloshing around that isn't needed. But um, uh, we unfortunately buy more when the price goes down. That That's our, our, our Achilles heel. We, we fill up the tank when price drops under four bucks a barrel or down to 350 or it goes from 650 to 450 or 650 to 525. We, we go, oh, I'll fill up the tank now. And uh, we don't get as um, creative in how to cut back. And that's our Achilles heel. It is, it is what does us in, uh, in an invisible way. It's an invisible tax so we pay. And we know it deep down inside. We know it, 